Hey guys, um, just want to do a little uh, little comic talk for you now. Um, last week we had some pretty big announcements, so um, let's uh, let's get to it. I think it'll be pretty cool of everything that's coming up right now. So first of all, um, on a free comic book day, March twenty fifth, we uh, had a little. Uh, our everybody's world got a little rocked, I guess, uh, with. Uh, the news of Captain America being a double agent, a Hydra agent. So uh, that's really kind of destroying people's brains uh, right now. You know, our, our boy in blue actually being a uh, secret Nazi. Um, apparently, uh, through the story, we have uh, Captain America's mother, uh, Steve Rogers' mother, being uh, recruited to this uh, little secret meeting, which was known as Hydra at the time. And... Uh, he uh, felt a uh, uh, affiliation to that group, supposedly, in the story. The uh, comic book ends with, uh, with Captain Rogers saying, saying, Hail Hydra, which is just destroying everybody's brain right now. Um, there's been some things posted out there saying, everybody relax, which, you know, I kind of agree with. It's a comic book. You know, first, uh, first, you know, they said that uh, Captain America was dead, and they brought, you know, they, they froze him, and then brought him back to life for the Avengers. Come on. You know, nobody ever truly dies in comics, um, which, you know, case in point, certainly after uh, the first Civil War run, written by Millar, you know, they, they killed him again. You know, Crossbones killed him. Guess what? He came back again. Um, you know, he had that, uh, in that alternate universe line where he lost all of his powers and became, you know, the scrawny Steve Rogers again. He, uh, you know, the, the, was it the cubic, you know, like restored him once again. So, you know, I don't believe that this is going to last. Um, it's probably going to be a short, you know, little run, maybe like, you know, a max a year, uh, which is kind of what they did with, uh, Spider-Man, you know, at the end of, uh, Spider-Man, what was it, 300? I think it was. <clears throat> you know, they had uh, Doc Ock actually switch consciousness with Peter Parker on Doc Ock's deathbed, which is, you know, actually led to technically the death of Peter Parker. And they launched the new title, the new line of Superior Spider Man, which, you know, was actually pretty fantastic. Um, I have the whole, the whole series, and it's, it's wonderful. And it, how they did it was excellent. They had the, the secret Peter Parker consciousness inside Doc Ock. But, um, you know, I mean, once again, that just proves that, you know, he's never really dead. After about a year or so, they brought Peter Parker back. You know, Peter Parker's consciousness took over his body once again. You know, it's just to show how strong he was. So, I mean, it's not going to last. Um, I think it's actually a pretty cool twist, especially right now with the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, going off. Uh, you know, Captain America is kind of a big hit with the big uh, movie right now of Captain America: Civil War. So, um, which uh, in that movie, you know, there was two significant characters missing, Thor and Hulk, which lead us to our next point of Thor Ragnarok. Um, some more information got dropped on some casting for it, uh, which is just so freaking cool. I'm so excited. Um, first of all, they have cast Kate Blanchett as Hela. Uh, the uh, the overlord death of Valhalla, which is uh, in you know the North mythology, obviously, um, you know it's their their afterlife, it's their underworld, <clears throat> which you know truly she's you know kind of I guess their their Hades, one of the absolute worst of the worst, as Mark Ruffalo put. Um, the other cool part is um, speaking keeping with that Valhalla. You have Carl Urban now playing Scourge, another one of the warriors in Valhalla. Um, I think, you know, obviously great casting choice. The man was fantastic in Dread. So, um, I mean, you know, we, we've got some, some great uh, great talents right there. You know, not to, uh, not to overshadow those by kind of the craziest one that uh, I, I feel. They're actually just bringing in the character of the Grand Master, being played by Jeff Goldblum. You know, an eccentric... Um, a little bit out there being played by a little eccentric out there actor. Um, you know, not to take anything away from Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum's the man. But to play a, uh, a being as uh, old as the universe, older than the universe, 
and uh, one that likes to play games with people's fates. Uh, that's pretty freaking cool. Um, I think it's a great casting choice. Um, definitely uh, interested in how the costume is going to look, considering Grandmaster's blue with white hair and wears this big yellow robe. Um, I don't know how well that's going to translate to screen. But I really would like to see him go up against the Hulk, which uh, we apparently are going to be getting a lot of Hulk in this movie, um, as according to Mark Ruffalo. He did say that there's going to be a lot more in the movie. He did say, and I quote, that the Hulk is going to be hulkier and smash a lot more in this movie than ever before. So, you know, in this intergalactic buddy film, we're uh, we're gonna have uh, some pretty cool uh, some some pretty cool cool things. Um, I think especially with Thor, uh, you know, you, you need to kind of go out there, uh, explore the universe a little bit more, um, go to different lands and different uh, alternate universes, kind of like they did a little bit in Dark World, but uh, hopefully to more of an extent. Um, and I guess going to that extent, you know, third topic, which came up last week, uh, I believe it was last week, Jeff Johns was uh, appointed kind of creative control for the DC Cinematic Universe, which for me personally, I don't think that they could have picked anything, uh, anybody better to actually run that. Um, I do agree with them pulling most of the creative control away from Zack Snyder um, and kind of just giving him, you know, his directorship um, of the films, um, but letting uh, Jeff Johns kind of run them. Jeff Johns, for those of you who don't know, is one of the uh, creative directors behind DC currently. Um, I'm not sure if he's the CEO, or not CEO, but the, the, you know, the main in charge yet, but I do know he shares that with uh, Jim Lee and some others. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... Um, but he was one of the ones to help launch the uh, new wave of the DC books, um, known as the New 52, you know, uh, quite a few years back now. Um, he created a lot more of the origin stories for uh, the bigger characters known, you know, now, bigger characters now, like, say, example, The Flash, which, you know, back before the New 52, nobody really gave uh, two, two thoughts about. So he created the storyline of Zoom going back in the past and killing his mother, which created the whole want and desire you know, of The Flash to do well. Barry Allen as The Flash. Um, one of the best origin stories now, I believe, in, in comic books. It's right up there with uh, Planet Krypton being destroyed and being written, uh, bitten by a radioactive spider, Batman's parents being shot. Uh, I mean, it couldn't really get any better. So for a man with the brain to have that linear train of thought and to have comics be the very first thing on his mind and his passion... To run the MC universe, I, I think, sorry, not the MC, the DC universe, um, I, it couldn't be any better. For a man with that uh, train of thought, comics being first, to run the DC universe, it couldn't be any better. Um, I, I think that we're going to have a lot better things coming up uh, with those movies, uh, kind of excluding uh, Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman, considering they've already been shot and wrapped. Uh, Suicide Squad are already uh, getting the release date in September. Wonder Woman's not that far after, um, which if you ask me, I think those are... Suicide Squad first is going to be their main saving grace for Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Uh, if they really want to set up anything big, it's going to have to be through that film. But if the trailers are any indication on how it's going to be, the mo this movie is going to be just action-packed, uh, full of joy, and just your traditional superhero um, romp through, uh, through film, which is exactly what it needs, considering um, BBS was a completely joyless movie. Um, I think that there was... I think the only time anybody smiled was just when uh, Clark Kent jumped into the bathtub with a naked Lois Lane, uh, which really didn't seem to be had in the movie at all. It was kind of a pointless scene. But, um, you know, it was Zack Snyder's choice. Uh, for me, I did enjoy the movie. Uh, not as much as I wanted to, but, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, has, it has its issues. Um, which hopefully now with the, uh, the creative control of Jeff Johns, uh, it'll, uh, it'll definitely spark it in the right direction. 
um, too, considering we've got a lot more dicier titles uh, coming up, like uh, Green Lantern Corps, uh, the Flash film, uh, especially with Aquaman. I mean, do you think the only nod that Aquaman ever really got was in Entourage when James Cameron directed it? So, uh, there it is. Um, that's kind of the news that has been dropped out. So, um, number one, Captain America, bad guy, question mark. I don't feel that that's going to be true, but we'll see in the future. Thor, shaping up to be one kick-ass movie. I'm um, getting really excited for that one. And Jeff Johns will hopefully be the savior for the DC uh, Cinematic Universe. So, um, you know, keep checking back. I'm definitely going to keep... Uh, Keep looking up everything. Um, keep you with the, uh, the most current, up-to-date uh, comic book news. So uh, enjoy and keep reading.